Here we go. Day 8 of the build, episode 35, I do believe. And where we're at is the output terminal of the volume pot has a loose connection and apparently that, at least as of last night, that was causing the issues and other than that, I think the circuit might be working. We'll find out. Got my claw thing hooked up here so that I can hold the pot in order to solder it. I think I need a better soldering gun or something here. I got uh, I got the volume pot wired soldered correctly again. And in the process, the wire, the hot wire came off of the kill switch. And in the process of trying to solder it back on, I melted down the kill switch. So let me go get another one. Okay, it looks like third time's the charm. I melted down a second one of these push button switches trying to hook this thing up. So I grabbed a third one. And yeah, third time's the charm. Kill switch is all hooked up and wired nicely, and got all the leads for the volume pot wired up nicely. So hopefully everything will work. And, yeah. Now I remember why I took three years electronic shop, but no more. Yeah, I don't particularly need a lot of patience for this. Oh my God, a lot of patience. I'll be back. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm going to have to waste your time seeing if this thing works. I'll either plug it in and it all works and then I'll turn the video back on and, and show you that it works. Or else I'll plug it in and something won't work and then I'll turn the video back on and say, well, something's not working and, it's, and it looks to be this or whatever. So but you don't need to watch me go through all the motions. Basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook everything back up so that I can test it, get it all spread out so nothing's touching and all that stuff and then start trying it, so, yeah. I'll be back. Let's see what I can do about all that buzz and hum. Start with, I got a real cable here, so that might help. That cheap cable was actually, that was a source of hum, I discovered, because I had the amp, like you hear right now, it's on, it's up, but, but, um, wait a sec. There we go, yeah, so, it was it was this quiet without that other cord plugged in, but as soon as you plugged in the cord, you started to get at least that level, if not higher. So, so I was like, yeah. Now the other thing I can do is I can just touch ground somewhere or everywhere, and that'll take care of it for testing purposes. Okay, I think I found the problem. Check this out. Looks like uh, the shaft of the pot right at the base here is cracked and the thing wiggles and loses contact. So yeah, bad pot. I'll be back. Okay, I dug around and found a few pots, I think you'd say. So yeah, I gotta check them out. I'm gonna find some audio pots, figure out what's audio and what's linear. Oops. Okay, I was thinking about 250 versus 500, and when your volume's all the way up, this is basically the circuit. You've got the wire coming from the pickup. It goes through the pot, and it's turned all the way to 10, so, so it, you've also got a more or less straight connection to the jack on the output side. This would be the output side, the center terminal on the pot, and these are the other two terminals on the pot. And when it's at 10, this is basically hot-wired between the pickup and the jack. But you've also got a resistor of either 250 or 500K that's going to ground, which is going to bleed off some of your volume just a little bit. I mean, you're talking a short versus 250 or 500K, so that's 
the electrons see this as being almost open and, you know, 99% are going to go through this way and just a couple of leaked ground. But, um, but yeah, that's, that makes the case for like the blast switch or whatever that takes this part out and gets you that last little bit of volume. As far as like a 250 versus 500k on the behavior, um, I'm thinking that a 500 will cause less loss and should be slightly louder, but, but the relationship between uh, resistance and power and stuff is linear, and uh, but sound is exponential. So you got for double the sound, double the volume, you need 10 times the power. So the difference between the leakage on a 250 versus 500 is not going to be, might not even be noticeable at all, really. So, and it's definitely not going to be like twice as loud or something like that. You know, maybe if you had a, well, let's see, for 10 times or twice the volume, you need like a 25K versus a 250K pot or a 50k pot versus a 500k pot kind of a thing so so um yeah the 500 should be theoretically a little louder and i think the 500 is going to make it get quieter before it goes dead so it should give you finer control maybe i'm not really i don't I mean, you saw how many pots I've got around. I don't really use tone controls and volume controls much myself, so I'm more of a straight through, and you know, I set my volume at the amp kind of a thing. But anyway, um, that's just my personal playing style. I mean, I've seen people who can do fantastic things with tones and volume controls and finished pickups and stuff, but but anyway, yeah, they can nurse all kinds of voices out of, out of you know, two pickups or three pickups but anyway yeah let me go figure out what's audio and what's linear I'm looking for audio because it's going to give me the nice linear behavior on the sound side since the linear takes care of the exponential behavior sound so I'll be back okay out of that pile of pots I got four A250s so I guess there's no question about 250 versus 500 for this puppy I'm going to toss one of these guys in. Not a broken pot shaft. The ground wire broke. Okay, I've got the camera zoomed all the way up. Maybe you can see this. Where are we at here? Right here. This guy. That's where um, the ground lead off the pickup here. That's where I wired it to my common ground that's running all along these guys. And I don't know, something happened. And the common ground actually snapped in half, where it was in the process of breaking in half. And that's why the pot was behaving weird when I wiggle it. So it was actually this and not that. Come here, camera. Go back a little. Yeah, it was actually this and not the bad pot I'm guessing it looks like so yeah let me uh, check it out looks like the pot's still defective though come on worked a minute ago yeah you wiggle the post and it cuts in and out so let me try a different pot so I'm doing the ground wire first, and since I took that ground wire and strung it through all these guys, um, I don't want to have to like unsolder it from there, and then from there, and then from there, and then string it in order to get this pot off the ground, or the ground off the pot. So I'm just going to cut it where it came off here, where it was soldered there, and I'm going to cut it where it goes at the terminal, leave that little bit there, then solder these two guys to the the new pot and put it on like a new jumper or something and boom there it is it's off that's the old one into the trash with that thing uh this time before i wire up the pot i thought about which way you turn it for volume up volume down 
and which terminal is which. Turns out the last one was wired backwards. Great, huh? Yeah, always always check that on your volumes and your and your tones. If you get it, if you guess wrong or whatever, then just flip the leads. Leave the center one and flip the two outside ones. Okay, this ground wire that I got out of the four conductor, it's too weak. It just broke again. I'm going to have to get some better wire. Maybe some copper or something. Lesson learned. The common ground thing works, but you don't want to use the ground wire out of four conductor because it's just too flimsy. And my iron's burning right through this stuff. It just crumbles like cookies, so. Cloth pushback wire with the cloth removed. Okay. Almost everything works, except when I turn off either of the coils, I get no output. So, obviously, my on-off circuits and probably my humbucker, my series parallel, they're not really compatible. Or something of that nature, so, I mean, it's like... to put that in parallel I guess yeah so so the humbucker parallel is going to be in parallel and then the coil splits work and yeah it looks like that's the deal so that's everything off this is coil A this is coil B, and this is parallel, hold on, this one, this is parallel, that's A and B parallel, and then, A and B parallel phase gets you that jangly thing. And then A and B humbucker, loudest yet. And then A and B humbucker phase. And once again, you got that jangly thing. So yeah, it all works. You just got to have it in parallel for the coil taps to work. So, there you go. Can't believe it. I, I still remember a little electronics. Okay, I need to disconnect it. Get the... I guess the next thing you do is to put in the pick guard to figure out the routing for this, and it's going to need a bridge ground wire. So, I guess that's next, is bridge ground wire and this wire. I'll figure something out. Where are we at on time on this video? Oh, 13 minutes. All right, I'll be back. Okay. Got some four, conduct four conductor and got the black wire out of it. And I got it wrapped around the post on the bridge here. And that's going to be the ground for the bridge. And I don't think I want to drill holes in this thing. So... This guy is going to go in here. Oh, I set the intonation. I... S yeah, the bridge actually... The front of the bridge should go at, at the saddle line, so I had to move everything back. Oh. About three millimeters. And then the normal step, 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 step thing for the saddles. And that got it pretty much squared away on intonation. And, uh... <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, the action. Uh, the bridge is all the way back down, slammed all the way back down. And the action is a little over 1.5 here. And it's right at about 1.5 here. 
and so this might need a little bit more shim. I'll have to wait and see. The body's still getting used to things. So, so yeah, that might need more shim. Um, now I've got these two wires here, and I think what I'm just going to do is just kind of send them right down at the corner here, and then maybe take a little bit off of the corner of the control panel pick guard thingy to allow them access. Like, yeah, it's just a little notch so they can get through. So that's where I'm at, I believe. I'm going to, I think probably what I'm going to end up doing, oh wait, that's right, this is all hooked together now. That blacky make me move, baby. There we go. Yeah, so probably what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to go ahead and route these two guys and then get them like tacked down right here. And that'll tell me how much I have to remove to get them through. And then remove that bit and then go ahead and glue the panel on. Uh, where are we at on time here? Get something black over this part. What is that? 15 minutes? Yeah, we're okay. I'll be back. I uh, thought about it a bit. I think I'm going to notch the back edge of the body instead of notching the pick guard. Okay. Got the uh, body notched out here. Let's see if I do this. Oh, where are we at? Yeah, right there's the notch. So yeah, the wires go through the notch. Pick guard is just taped in the, into place at the moment. So the next step is to flip all this over and glue the the pick guard on or control panel. I'll be back. What's our time now? 17. We're still good. Okay, time to do this. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to clamp it down or if I even need to. And uh, so I've got both the brick and that little clamp thing ready to go. So, wish me luck. Live, unedited, unscripted. Recorded live, unedited, unscripted, blah blah blah. Not much of a tip on this thing. We're gonna go from the body out to about, let's see, like here. Do it. And we'll come down like this. And that's about it right there. Let's set for a minute and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's on. Alright, now I gotta do the back. I'll be back.
Okay, I have a, a number of blocks and shims under this to get to support this level with the back of the body. That's about where it's going to go. Got the cap off the glue. Grab the glue here. I couldn't really think of a good way to clamp this, so I guess I'm just going to hold it there for a second. Maybe kind of a thing. Okay, give it a minute, see what happens. I forgot to mention that I cleaned this up with naphtha and then I hit it up with some thousand grit before I put it on. Like I said, once I, once I finished the guitar, stained it and clear coated it, whatever, then I can go ahead and come in with like 2000 or polisher or rubbing compound, micro grit, micro mesh, that kind of stuff in order to get that thing all shiny. Okay, let's see what we got. Looks good. Yep, looks good. Okay, time to. this stuff and plug it in the holes. I'll be back. Oh, I forgot to mention that I notched it right here instead of back here because that way the wires would run right next to the bridge and that's where they would come out. And the way I notched it was with the coping saw. I came in like this and then I was able to loop it around the leg bar and come in like this in order to do the actual notch. So, don't want to leave out any little details. Okay, all in the slots. Um, I don't know if they're forwards or backwards, and uh, I haven't bolted them on yet or screwed them on, whichever the case may be. I'll need to secure this down somehow. Wish I had some mounting tape or something. And I need to wire this up to ground. Okay, I think I want to set this thing up so that so that when you're in like humbucker no phase, both coils on, then like all the switches are down. So I've got these, I spun these guys around so that coil on is down and coil up is off. And the series parallel is already set up so that down is series and up is parallel. But the phase is not really the way I want it to be. It's um, down is phase on and up is phase off. So I'm going to switch the leads on the phase switch and I need, still need to put the nuts and bolts on the other side of the hardware here. Plus it's time to fish up some screws for these uh, five-way switches. So hopefully I can find four little gold like truss rod cover screws might work or something, something of that nature, maybe a little larger. So, anyway, yeah, that's where I'm at.
Okay, got everything but the screws for the switches here. Um, I swear, it seems like half of my guitar building time is spent uh, looking for parts, either looking for parts online for the next builder mod or looking for, for parts in, you know, like right now I gotta find some screws, so I gotta go fish through the screw bag and maybe through the two or three bags of unsorted parts that I've you know, cleaned off the table and didn't sort out and put away properly. And then, uh, or parts that, like, you know, fall off fall off the workbench or, or, you know, that kind of thing. So, so, yeah, I'm off to go fish for parts. Okay, the five-way switches take, like, import screws. I've got genuine fender selector switch screws but they're SAE and apparently these guys here take um, pretty much put together and pick it up now. yeah so yeah those guys in there these holes at the end they're metric and uh, so I'm gonna go with uh, and I don't have gold for four screws in proper size and gold, so I'm going to use, uh, I think I'm going to use these. These are uh, the four screws that came off the jack plate, so why not? Yeah, so now that I've finally selected a screw for the uh, selector switches, now I need to take that 1 16th, I guess it was, pilot hole that I drilled, and go ahead and drill them out for these screws. So the trade-off of using these guys instead of like a fender style is that, um, well, there's, there's two trade-offs. One, these are oval head, and the fender style is a round head. And two, this is going to end up with a sheet metal type screw type connection whereas the fender type is a machine screw type connection and yeah machine screw is better but this will work you put it together and take it apart too many times it won't work anymore but you know, always put a drop of CA glue on it and then it'll work again so well that's cool not only were the jack screws in the bag but also the, if it focus, the mechanical screws, it can't really focus on this thing, are, yeah, but, yeah, machine thread screws that actually fit these switches, so we got it going on. Well, one good piece of news. String alignment hasn't changed any, so yeah, looks like that neck joint's working good now. Okay, all hooked up. Got a volume knob, nice and tight. Got a kill button, nice and sturdy. Got our on-off toggle switches, nice and tight and sturdy. Everything here is looking good. Got our Selector switches or jack. Yeah, everything's looks good So Next step yeah, These guys have been run down there through the groove and the Next step is need to ground this guy and need to Secure this somehow I'm Not really sure. I Don't want to see a glue it. That's how it got all tore up in the first place. This might have been off of one of the old versions of guitar number four or something. Um, I'm thinking maybe just a piece of black electrical tape. So, all right, I'll be back. So check this out. It's on extreme zoom. This thing seems to tip the scales at just three pounds, maybe ten ounces, something like that. So, yeah. I thought I should mention that. This thing is exceedingly lightweight. It's like lighter than an acoustic. 
It's like the weight of a ukulele almost. Well, it's a little heavier than a ukulele. It's about uh, like a mini guitar or uh, yeah, about the weight of a mini guitar maybe. Well, I had these silver selector switch knobs or switch tips or whatever you call them, but but they don't fit. So I'm gonna figure something out. Um, not right now necessarily, but yeah, in general I'm gonna have to figure something out. I did get the bridge wired up. Where's bridge ground? Bridge ground is wired up. Bridge ground is wired up to the ground, common, and I just used a bit of tape in order to hold this thing down. And so, yeah, let's sit for the electronics. Um, don't have knobs. What's left? Go strap and strap locks. Final tuning and put the locks back on it. Intonation is set. Oh, I got uh, gold screws, mounting screws for the pickup. I was thinking of putting this back on it or maybe a full cover. This thing's still got wax on it. And what else is left? screws for the pickup and uh, and that's about it the strap and the pickup cover I think that'll do it then of course it'll need knobs and at that point the guitar should be completed and uh, strap and strap locks, yeah, knobs for the selectors, gold screws here, a pickup cover, and uh, either that or just scrape the wax off. And then I think it's done as far as like the build or the first assembly. Yeah, you, you put it all together. You get it all the way up and working, then you take it all apart and refinish it. So I would basically, at that point I would take the strings off, take the bridge off, oh, electronics can stay, electronics can stay, um, computers can stay, I'd probably disconnect the neck from the body. And then I stain the body and, and leg arm and stain the neck. I'd mask, you know, things off as needed, like the fretboard and maybe the front of this and, and the pickup or whatever. And, and like maybe the tuners if I have to and, and you know, put some tape over this to protect it or something. So yeah that but um I mean most of this stuff you know stain a wipe right off of metal pretty much water based dye actually not even stain so I don't have to worry about that too much um the plastic might be a concern but you know I can just be careful there's no plastic any place if I'm just trying to get wood around here that's all up on a metal stand so it doesn't look that bad, really. Um, so, yeah, that's basically where I'm at. Um, I think that we're approaching 30 minutes or so on this on this particular video, so that's probably a good stopping point. Um, I guess the next step is going to be... What's left? Let's see, the DPT... DPDT switches are for uh, version 2.0. So, 
we're down to a pickup cover and pickup screws and strap and strap locks. So yeah, this puppy's almost done. Almost done. All right. Well, till the next video, everybody have a good one.